It's August 7th. It's been one week. How has it been a week? A week since my baby left this world. Time just keeps going. The world keeps spinning. The grass keeps growing. Things need done. Part of my world stopped. Part of my soul left this world. And time just keeps going. It doesn't feel fair. It doesn't feel right. On the one hand, I feel guilty for not doing happy things and being happy and being joyful because he was pure joy and pure love and he would not want me to be sad. On the other hand, it feels bad to do fun things. It feels, it's hard. It's hard to make new memories and do fun things. I've been trying because I know I can't get stuck like this. I've got nine other kids that are depending on me. And Tilk wouldn't want me to just give up. Yesterday, Corbin just seemed really sad, really quiet. So I decided I was gonna take him out for ice cream. Well, turns out everything's closed in this town. <laughs> for some reason on, on Tuesdays, everything's closed. Coffee shops closed. Restaurants closed. Well, the restaurant was open, but by the time we went, they closed at 5.30. The restaurant here closes at dinner time. Don't ask me why, they just do. They're open a little bit later on weekends, but everything closes early here. The grocery store only stays open till 7. Everything else closes at like 5.30. And if you're not paying attention, you miss it. So I was going to take him for ice cream. Yes, dear? Oh, yeah, that's cute. I was going to take him for ice cream, only to realize it was Tuesday, and we got there, and they were closed. The pizza place was closed. So he's crying. My oldest, Dylan, he was over, um, and he goes, oh, let's, let's go to the next town over. They got stuff open. So we did. Um... We went to a restaurant called Crossings that I've never been to before, even though I've lived here 20 years. And we ordered a tree hugger pizza, it was pretty good, and a, um, we ordered a sweet Thai chili, uh, chicken wings. It was basically like chicken nuggets, but they were so good. And blue cheese dressing, and it was the best blue cheese dressing I've ever had. And I really enjoyed the food. In fact, it was the first time I've eaten all week that it didn't feel like I was going to throw up. It didn't feel like a rock in my belly. I was actually having a good time. Corbin was being goofy. He took his glass, and they had the ice that has the circle through it through the center and he put it on his straw and he was playing with it and I'm like, you're such a goofball. And I actually felt good. And Dylan turns to me and he goes, you know, mom wants you to feel happy. But that moment also made me sad because I'm making happy memories without my boy. For the first couple of days, I felt like I could feel him with me, like maybe his spirit was still there. I don't know how long people are allowed to linger between realms, you know? And maybe he was there. My husband's computer has LED lights in it, and they've always been blue or green, depending on his settings. He's never turned them purple. Yesterday, no, it wasn't yesterday, it was the day before. He was sitting there crying, missing Tilk, and all of a sudden his computer lights turned purple. Tilk's favorite color was purple. I felt like every now and then when I'm crying, I feel his little hand on my cheek. But it's fading. I only 
got his left hand print and I was absolutely destroyed by that and I probably mentioned this before. I, my memory is no good right now. I keep repeating myself. He only gave me his left hand print. He had his right hand curled up so tightly that the funeral home wouldn't let, couldn't, couldn't get it. And I realized something. Toke's right hand was the hand he always reached out to me for comfort, but it was his left hand that he used to play with. He'd hold his toys with his right hand like this one. He'd hold it with his right hand and push the button with his left hand. <coughs> um, it was his left hand that determined if you were going to cuddle with him or if he was going to push you away. Because if he wanted to cuddle, he'd also wrap his left arm around you put his hand in my hair or touch my face but if he didn't want to cuddle if he wanted to play and he didn't want you to to be hugging on him he'd take his left hand and push your face not hard just enough to say nope so maybe it's maybe he did that on purpose he only gave me his left hand because he's like no mom it's time for me to go time for me to go play. Can't hang on to me anymore. <sighs> I wish I had both his handprints. His sweet little hands. I'll never get to touch them again. Or look in his eyes. QB behave. Every time a car goes by she growls. She's been really jumpy since she misses him. She She's a dog. She doesn't know what's going on. She doesn't know why he's not here. She just misses him. Today all of his diapers and formula are going to be picked up because we found somebody we can donate them to. There's so many diapers. I was always scared that I was going to run out of supplies because we actually did a few times when he was little. <coughs> we had a hard time getting syringes. We had a hard time getting formula. And there was times that we ran out and it was really scary and we had to figure out how to do things without the supplies we needed. In fact, during Hurricane Katrina, there was an interruption in the formula and supplies um, because at the time our state didn't keep the supplies on hand. They had it trucked in. Well, um, we ran out and we had to try to make formula for him. And it was really scary. Um, we had to stretch our supplies. We had like a handful of syringes. And now the syringes break down really fast. You can only use them for a day or two before they just don't go anymore. So we had to take the plunger out of the syringes and use it like gravity feeding. But we couldn't just do gravity feeding because he would wiggle around too much. So we had to figure out other ways and it was really scary. So I started hoarding supplies. I would order the maximum amount that our insurance would pay for every month so that I always had extra. Over the years, we built up a lot of supplies, especially diapers. Now his formula, when we changed his formula last year, we hadn't built up a huge supply of formula. <clears throat> um, we had about a month's extra and that formula was more expensive and more difficult to get and every drop was precious we didn't waste a single drop of it because we knew that you know if it suddenly runs out it's really hard to get more when he got sick in April I knew he wasn't gonna last much longer um, so I stopped hoarding the supplies. I stopped ordering extra. In fact, I didn't even make an order the month that he died. Um, well, I ordered his formula, obviously, but I didn't order extra diapers or anything like that because we already had so much. One of the things that, one of the things that we had more of than I thought we did were his feeding tubes. Um, he got a new one every month, but we didn't always have to change it out every month. Um, Ellie, move back mine. 
we only had to change it when it started to leak. And sometimes we'd go two months with the same tube. So over time, we, we, built, we built up a supply of these. Um, I didn't realize how many we had. Most of them were expired. We couldn't donate them because they were expired. We still would have used them. They're still in good shape. But I couldn't give them to anybody, and honestly, I don't think I'd want to. Yeah, thank you, dear. No, this is, no. No. Um, I'll give you one later. Okay? I won't chew on that one. You won't chew on it? Yeah, I gave one to Braytac because he said he wanted it, and then he absentmindedly chewed on it and broke it, and I broke down. These were part of Tilk his whole life. And honestly, I, I just could, I couldn't throw them away. So I'm gonna keep them. I mean, obviously I couldn't keep the one that was in his belly. That one got burned with him in his ashes. But these little things, this is how he ate. Mom. Yep. There's, you put the syringe in there to put the food in, and then this, okay, stop. Thank you. Stop. This had, uh, has a little balloon, and you use a syringe with water to put about five mils in it, and this poofs up, and that's how it stayed in his belly. These little things enabled me to feed my baby. But he's gone now. I was always so scared I was gonna run out of supplies. I didn't run out of supplies, I ran out of tilk. No, I have too much. Most of it's going to be donated. Most of it's going to go to help someone else. I took all the diapers out of our storage and there was so much. And then my kids built a fort with it, which made me laugh. And honestly, Tilk would have loved that. He would have absolutely loved that. His medical records have all been closed out got a letter in the mail yesterday from his medical. He was on state medical because of all of his needs. Um, when he was little, we couldn't get private insurance for him. And we just kept him on state medical forever because they, they paid for everything. <clears throat> and we got a letter. Tilk's medical assistance has stopped. We are closing his case because we heard that he died. Like, literally, that's how they put it. Like, you could have used deceased or passed on. Like, something that's not so harsh. And then, for some reason, we got an EBT card addressed to him. That's never happened before. Like, why? And why now? So been calling trying to figure out what this is and why they sent it to us. I, somebody said that there was a, a summer program for kids on Medicaid that gave them EBT money. Um, but for it to show up like that after he's gone was kind of like a gut punch. Just like they also called to tell me that he was supposed to have an appointment next week. He had so many doctors and so many specialists and we went to so many different hospitals because when he was little, everything was all contained in one hospital. But as his doctors started retiring or moving to other places, he went to like four or five different hospitals towards the end. I mean clinics, not, not hospitals. Four or five different clinics to see different specialists because they weren't all in one place anymore. And I thought we had notified everybody, but we missed the sleep lab 
and he was supposed to have a sleep study. He was going to get a CPAP machine. And so she called to verify the appointment and ask about him. And I just said, he died. She goes, what? Can you say that again? I said, he died. He passed away. And it's really hard every time I have to tell somebody that doesn't know. Um, and I, the other day I was trying so hard to find something that I could eat without throwing up. So I walked down to the restaurant and ordered a burger <clears throat> and, um, the lady there, she's so cheerful and she's asking about Robert and how are you guys doing? And I just sort of stared at her. She goes, are you okay? I said, no. She's like, is Robert okay? I said, well, as okay as he can be, I guess. She's like, well, what happened? I said, you didn't hear? You didn't hear? Like, literally, her coworkers the other day had sent us flowers and stuff, so I assumed everybody at the restaurant knew. It's like the owners of the restaurant knew. They sent us, they sent us pizza and flowers. See, he died, Coke died, he's gone. She was, oh, Rob's work wants to build a memorial to Tilk. In one of our little rest areas or something, put something with his name on it. They asked me what I would want. And I said, a new picnic table. There's this little spot next to the post office that we've always gone for picnics. And even though Tilk didn't eat food, he was always there with us. In fact, the last time we went for a picnic was in March because the weather had been so mild this year. We didn't have any snow and it was warm. So we went out for a picnic just before he got sick. And even though his body had gotten too weak to go to the, the park, to play on the playgrounds, to go to the beach, going for a picnic was still something he enjoyed. The picnic bench, the, the picnic table, has been broken for a few years. It's bad. It's falling apart. Nails sticking through it because people have tried to fix it. And I've thought about getting the wood and fixing it. I just didn't have the time. And I didn't know who to talk to either because, you know, it's owned by the city. And I didn't know who to talk to about fixing it. So I said, if you're going to do something like that, get a new picnic table for that spot and then it'll feel like I'm going to have lunch with my boy so we do picnics all the time we haven't really this summer because Tilk was too sick and because that bench is completely broken we we were sitting on the on the ground instead when we did our picnics except he'd be in his wheelchair but every summer his whole life at least once a week, we would go and have a picnic there. I said, that's what I want. That's what I want you to do. I hope they do. I really hope they do. People have been very generous and very kind. And even if it's the most ridiculous things, like a box of crayons or some toothbrushes, I haven't, I haven't refused any gifts because I know Telk would want me to, to, to accept. And I've been so grateful. So very, very grateful. <clears throat> um, the Kabuki Syndrome Foundation sent us a check right away for to help with his final expenses. And then yesterday, um, the lady that runs this foundation asked me if she could start a fundraiser. I said, well, I don't, I don't want to be greedy. We are, we ran the GoFundMe and it covered the cost of cremation. She goes, no, 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 no. This isn't for that. This is for you and the kids. And I said, okay. So she's running a fundraiser. I don't know if it's going to raise anything or not. But it's really kind that she's doing that. Um, <clears throat> this is Tilk's little elephant. One of the many toys that he had. He always loved baby toys. The toys that made noise. He would hold this and push the button. Over and over, it doesn't work anymore. We have two of them. One of them still works. The one, 
the one that still works the hospital gave us in April. This one, Rob's mom bought for him a couple years ago for his birthday. And he played with it so much that it doesn't work. Even when I replace the batteries, it only just, like, it'll turn on and it'll go, D -d 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 -d, and then it'll turn right back off. But it had, like, I don't know, five or six songs that he would cycle through until he got to the one that sounded like it said rainbow chicken poop. That's not what it actually said. That's just what it sounded like to us. And we would, every time he pushed the button, we would, we would sing it out, rainbow chicken poop. When we were in the hospital in April, I told the nurses about it. And so they would sing it every time he'd get to that part. Rainbow chicken poop. And Tuck would laugh. He didn't laugh as much after being in the hospital, but before he got sick, he would laugh like crazy every time we got to that part. And he would, he would crawl and he would always bring his toys with him when he'd crawl. He'd like push it and crawl a little bit, push it and crawl a little bit. And he didn't like it if he went and took the toy to wherever he was going because he didn't always know what direction he was gonna go. And he, this was one of the ones that he would drag around. He did that with his Bebo and with his, he loved those baby toys that you push down and they, they spin on the inside and make noise. In fact, a couple days before he died, when he seemed like he was feeling better, he was laying in Rob's office, pushing on that toy. It's really hard to watch videos of him right now because hearing his little noises and knowing he's not here is hard. Looking at pictures helps, but the videos, the videos are hard. I just want to hear his voice again for real. I just want to hold him, kiss his sweet little face. I had a dream that I was holding him. I woke up, realized it wasn't a dream, it was like thousands of knives going through my body all at once. This blanket, this was his first blanket. It's so tiny. This was from the NICU. I'm not sure if we were actually supposed to take this home with us. But this is what they wrapped him up in. <coughs> and I brought it home. I thought it was gone forever, actually, because I had lost it. Turns out it was in a box at my in-law's house that they actually gave us back a few months ago. And it had a bunch of stuff in it from when the kids were little. Some of it I was able to save like this, thankfully, but some of it was like mildewy and molded and I had to throw away. But this was okay. This was, this was okay. And then I've got his jammies. Oh, I finally got to that laundry pile. The laundry pile was massive. I was managing to clean the laundry, but I couldn't handle folding it and put it away all week long. There's probably about 20 loads of laundry sitting there and I couldn't do it because Tilk's clothes were in there and that would be the very last time that I folded his clothes. I finally got through it. It took me half the day because I would start and stop and start and stop. I finally got through it. There was only three outfits in the whole pile because most of it was from after because I had just put away laundry the day that we went into the hospital. The outfit that he wore to the hospital was in there. There's still some things I need to sort through. I haven't touch the kids' closet. I knew I was needed to organize it again soon anyway. <coughs> I have to do that way too often. Sorry, my... <coughs> That's like I got something on my throat. And I didn't grab a glass of water. Hey, Naomi, sweetie. Naomi. Hey, baby girl. She's got her headphones on. Naomi. <coughs> Know me, girl. Oh, never mind. She can't hear me anyway. <coughs> Sorry. Um, I was gonna ask her to get me a glass of water. 
Uh, I'm having a hard time thinking about organizing the kids' closet because his toys are in there. But I do want, I want to find all his toys because we're going to make like a little area for him for his ashes and some pictures. And I want to put some of his toys on a shelf or something so they don't get broken or lost. I designed a plushie from Budsies. That was expensive. But I designed it based on the, the way I drew him in my comics. Um, it's going to be about this big. I wish I could make it the size that he was. Um, that'll be a couple months before I get that. <clears throat> um, all the posts I've been writing on Facebook, I've been like writing letters to him, writing about him his pictures and stuff I I decided you know because I'm an author so I'm gonna put this in a book first it was gonna be just for me for like another scrapbook but my therapist said that I should make it public because it might help other people through their grief and be like a tribute to him but I decided to use screenshots because I don't have it in me to go through it and edit it. Because I've got spelling mistakes and capitalization mistakes in a lot of my posts. Sometimes because my fingers were shaking too much and other times because my brain's just not there. And I don't have it in me to go back and fix it. I want it to be exactly, exactly how it is conveying the raw emotions because ultimately <clears throat> ultimately it's <clears throat> excuse me I'm really sorry um it's raw it's real it's everything I'm thinking and feeling right now that's all I have left all I have left of him. Pictures, videos, stories, ashes. Somebody said something on one of my posts about God making beauty from ashes, and I'm like, well, that's interesting because that was the day we picked up his ashes. I don't know how to be me without him. Every day was filled with things that had to be done right now, right now, right now, right now. Nothing could ever wait. And on days when I didn't have him with me, when he was with his caregivers, those were the days I had to play catch up with everything and everyone else. Right now, right now, right now. Everything had to be done quickly. <clears throat> and now I don't have anything that has to be done quickly. And I, I don't know how to function. Dylan said to me, he's like, Mom, now your life is normal like everyone else. I said, but Dylan, I haven't lived in normal for 15 years. I don't know how to be normal. <clears throat> I don't know how to not be rushing around and doing so many things that I'm exhausted all the time. When I went to go to bed last night, I couldn't go to bed because I felt like so many things needed to be done. I get anxiety because his feeding time comes and I can't feed him. I took the alarms off my phone, but my body remembers. I go into eatless, oh, on days that I didn't have him with me, I would get anxiety when it was feeding time, even though I knew his caregivers were, were taking care of it. I would still, my body would still respond. And I don't know how to take myself out of that. I'm sure it will eventually, I'll get used to it. But right now I'm not. Right now it's about every two hours 
I start to feel a mild panic because I, I can't feed him. Mom. Yeah? My foot's gone. Oh, okay. 